right, guys, welcome back to Lily and Rose. My name is Summer Noel, and today we're going to do a really, really fun cup. Now, this is going to be kind of an elegant version of my Bumblebee cup. I always tell you guys I have more than one way of doing a certain style cup. But I get so busy and I get so uh, worked uh, uh, running around doing all these tutorials that sometimes I don't get back to all my other styles that I do. Uh, but we're going to teach you how to do my elegant Bumblebee today. I'm going to work on this super cute mug. Uh, because these are really popular right now. We have these on our website. Uh, they're just really fun and it's the uh, holidays and so these make great hot cocoa mugs. Um, I drink hot tea all year round, uh, so this is probably going to end up being a personal cup for me. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this foam and I'm going to stick it right down on, this is my new way of doing this guys, I'm going to stick it right down on top of this, uh, this is a paper towel rack holder. I got this on sale at Ross, it was like three bucks in the clearance department. This foam piece is from our Little Eaton Road Turner. So we have our Turner. Uh, the foam piece, oops, oops, don't spill your epoxy, Summer. Uh, the foam piece uh, goes right on the end of the Turner and then uh, it can go on here as well. So the reason I'm putting it on here is if I stick it on here and then I stick my cup on there, my cup is already attached to the foam uh, and I don't need to try to move it around. Um, I can just pull the cup off when it's done, oops, sorry, bang the camera. You can just slide the cup off with the foam, take the cup and stick it on your turner and just keep working. So that is why I'm doing that. Oops, dude, I am like a bull in a china shop right now. Uh, we are just gonna do it like that. Uh, this is gonna be our hang method bowl. This is a silicone pad. I just put it, I cut a little hole in the middle, slid it down over my uh, paper towel drying rack. I just had this epiphany this morning that this would then catch any potential drips that fall down. Uh, we are going to do the hang method on this cup. We're going to jump right in. You can see I've already got my epoxy mixed. Uh, this is epoxy resin, art resin. You want to get a tabletop style resin. It's generally FDA compliant. If you don't know how to search for resin, underneath this tutorial, there will be a whole bunch of links. There will be a chunk of links there for molding, uh, for epoxy, uh, that's FDA compliant. You want to use FDA compliant epoxy because people potentially will be putting their mouths against the surface of this cup to drink out of it. Um, and you want to make sure that there's no chemical there that they could end up ingesting that's uh, disruptive to their bodies. So this is FDA compliant. Uh, we are going to use two mLs right there. That's probably even too much. I am going to generally try to avoid the handle on this one. Some of them I do, some of them I don't. But this handle, I do not want this to be glittered. So I'm only going to put the epoxy on the areas. I'm going to only slide the epoxy down to the areas that I want glittered. Now, I could have taped off the handle, but, and if you are new to this, I recommend taping off the handle. Um, I do this a lot, so I'm going to be able to easily work around that handle uh, without having to tape it off. But if you need to, you can use painter's tape and wrap it around the handle, just like if you were painting your room, you would tape off the things you don't want painted. Um, so you can use painter's tape to tape off that little handle. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking those two mLs and I'm rubbing it down the cup with my finger. These are nitrile gloves, guys. These are very important. This is going to keep the chemicals from this product seeping into your skin. Uh, because while when it's cured, yes, it is FDA compliant. But while it's curing, it is emitting fumes that you can't always necessarily smell or know that they're, they're there, but they are. This is not a very, this is a very... Um, volatile, I don't know, volatile is not the word, but it, it's, it's a very um, product that's very important to use your PPE or equipment. That's your safety equipment, guys. So I am wearing a chemical mask. I am wearing my nitrile gloves. So I'm not breathing in any of the vapors that this is putting off. Um, this is not a particularly smelly epoxy. This is Pro Marine that I'm using. Um, and so it's not a particularly, I don't think it's a particularly stinky one. But it doesn't matter because I can't smell it anyway because I'm inside of my epoxy mask. Keeping my, my, my lungs safe, guys. It is real. Allergies to this stuff um, are real. Not everybody has a reaction. So you will see people who just are like, I don't use one. I'm fine. Don't listen to them. <laughs> just wear your PPE gear, please. Um, I was fine in the beginning. I was one of those people. Actually, I was one of those people because I didn't know better. Um... I didn't know what PPE gear was. I didn't know that you were supposed to wear it when you were working with epoxy, but I have now since educated myself quite extensively, and now I know I need to be wearing it. So I've got my gloves and my mask on. If you have any kind of sensitivity to this stuff, wear a full face mask. Also wear 
um, a full face mask and long sleeves so you don't get any of the product on your arms. The handle is not epoxied. I'm just going to hold it by the handle. We're going to take our glitter. This is Bosley. Um, I am, this is going to be Bosley. I'm using, he's different than what you would use on the other honeybee tumbler. This one is more muted. This is more of a champagne gold. Like I said, this is just going to be a different style bumblebee tumbler. But it's going to be very, very, very different than my first one that you guys watched from me. So you can see how I do this. Um, I just use my parchment paper. This is a pre-folded sheet. I preach about these in my Facebook group. I love them because I can do that with one hand because it's pre-folded. I can just pick it up, slide the glitter back into it, into my cup, and just keep on going. So you can see I'm just coating the bottom, getting everything all the way around. This is a chunky fine mix, guys. This is, again, Bosley. I don't know if I mentioned that. Sorry. This is Bosley off of our website. I'm just going to push any of this epoxy off that's there. Not epoxy, sorry, glitter. It's just sticking to the cup. All right, so now we have it like this. We're going to stick it back down on our drying rack here. And then we're going to take it, clean up our glitter a little bit here. Okay, we're going to move it back into the middle. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to press the glitter down. We're just making the glitter lay flat against the cup. That way it's a lot easier to uh, epoxy over the top of it and not use as much epoxy. This is just going to help uh, use less product because epoxy is not cheap. It is pricey. Um, so we don't want to use a ton of it. We also don't want this cup to be 8,000 pounds in weight because you had to put that much epoxy on it to cover the glitter that's chunky. So if you just take your hands and press the glitter down, it lays down very, very flat to the cup. You'll have a little fallout on your hand. That's okay. Um, that's why we, if you saw, I had the cup prepped and uh, it was already spray painted a color very similar to the color of the glitter that we were going to use. So that it get, helps get coverage. Um, and this is a chunky fine mix. So the fine pen fills in all the cracks between the chunky. Um, it's really, really fun. Uh, let's see. See here, we've got our handle still exposed. I am just taking my fingernail, running it along, making sure there's no little bits of epo uh, glitter that might get stuck to little pieces of epoxy. So we don't want to have to sand it. Uh, this cup has already been sanded and washed and then spray painted. If you don't know how to prep a cup, guys, click underneath this video. It says Little and Rose. Click on that, scroll back, and you can watch one of my tutorials. It's on how to prep your cups. Now, if you're going to do a solid base on a cup, you want to make sure you have a really good prep job done on the bottom so that everything can stick to it very, very well. If it's not prop prepped properly, it might, uh, the, uh, the epoxy will separate from the uh, base of the cup. All right, guys, we're going to let this cure for probably about five hours and we're going to put it under more epoxy. We'll see you soon. So we are back. We are about to fit, mix our epoxy. We've got our part A and part B. Um, as you can see, part B is a little bit yellow. So I'm going to show you my little trick that I do um, to counteract that yellow. It has to do with toothpicks and blue food coloring. Um, <clears throat> all you have to do is mix them together. I'm going to go, I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a vo voice loss today, guys. So I sound even weirder than normal. Um, so I'm going to put my chemical mask on and we're going to get mixing. Uh, my workshop is closed today, so I am wearing my chemical mask. Um, I do have my whole vent fan on, but we are just working this way. Um, so we've got my chemical mask on. I'm wearing my nitrile gloves, guys. We've got our part A and our part B. We are going to mix these together. So I'm going to take my little silicone stir stick, and I'm going to add my part B to my part A. Um, I've been asked if it makes a difference if you add one part to the other and if it, it really makes a difference. Some people have said yes. I don't find that it makes any difference. Uh, I've added B to A and A to B, and it comes out exactly the same. It's, it doesn't matter. Um, not that I've visually inspected and seen a difference. Uh, I just find it's easier to pour B into A because B pours easier because it's the more fluid uh, version, the fluid option. Okay, so now we're going to mix this up. This is Promarine, guys. Uh, Promarine does tend to yellow quickly. Um, I do love Promarine because I find it to be the most forgiving epoxy for beginners. 
um, but it does yellow quickly and it has a low temperature rating. So um, it's a great beginner epoxy. Uh, I love working with it. It works beautifully in molds as well. Uh, but again, it only um, can only withstand up to 190 degrees, so you don't want to leave this cup in a hot car. Um, and the uh, epoxy does tend to yellow quicker than other epoxies, but I counteract that with my little trick. So you guys can see I'm just stirring it up here. Um, I'm scraping the edges. I wipe off the stick. I make sure all the epoxy gets mixed very, very well. If you don't have it mixed very well and you have a little speck that is not mixed properly, along the edges or on the spoon or something, um, that epoxy will not cure and you'll have a wet spot, um, a tacky spot, and it will have to be stripped off. You cannot cover epoxy, uh, tacky epoxy with more epoxy. The chemicals, um, the dangerous chemicals are still there and it will leach through the next layer of epoxy. So you can see there's a bunch of bubbles in there. I don't worry about bubbles because I torch them out, guys. Um, I use my kitchen torch. This is what you guys see me use. I run it over very quickly and the CO2 from the flame draws the bubbles out of the uh, epoxy. So now we've got this mix just like this. I'm going to take a toothpick. Even though this is not, this layer is not going to be white, I just want to show you guys this trick. So I, I've showed this a lot in my Facebook group, but I, I don't know if I've ever done it on a video for you guys, so I thought I would add it to this one. Um, so I just take the end of the toothpick and touch it down inside the blue food coloring, and then I take it and I swirl it into that epoxy, just like that, wipe it off. It doesn't take hardly any, like these small, you don't even want a drip. You, if a drip is too much, it makes the epoxy blue. This tiny, tiny, tiny smudge of blue just counteracts that yellow. So the yellow goes away. It's science, so fun. So you guys see right there, now there's no more yellow in the epoxy. It does have a very, very, very mild tint of blue, but you will not see that once it's spread all over the cup. All right, we're going to get this turner rolling. And we're going to apply the epoxy. Sorry, I have to wipe off my epoxy stick. We're going to use, um, so this is an epoxy stir stick, guys. You can reuse these. You do not have to throw them away. I'm going to move my little toothpick jar over there. We're going to get our turner on. Now, I am not taping off the handle on this one. Uh, because I actually want to have the handle be this color. So I'm going to actually let the epoxy flow over the whole thing, and we are going to epoxy over this handle. Because I don't want a stainless steel colored handle. I want uh, this beautiful kind of brassy gold, that like the champagne gold that matches the champagne of our glitter. So we're just going to take the... And again, this is Bosley Glitter. This is from our website, guys. It's beautiful. It's beautiful champagne gold. And we're just going to take our silicone brush... Dip it in and start slowly applying this epoxy. I'm not going to get too crazy. No crazy method here, guys. We're just adding our epoxy. I'll do this one in slow motion or regular motion. Oops. My button. In uh, regular motion and any other time I epoxy, we'll do it in fast motion so it speeds up the tutorial a little bit. You can see I'm just making sure the epoxy I previously applied is all the way to the top and bottom edges. Kind of finessing it now. Maybe add a little bit more as we go, where it seems like it has a little bit less coverage. This is my new favorite shape of cup right now. I'm trying not to do every single one of my tutorials as a mug, but I really like this cup. Mainly because it's kind of the holidays. Not kind of, it is the holidays now, and this just makes me think of Warm hot chocolate and sitting and watching movies and just kind of the holiday season, which I absolutely love, which, I mean, who doesn't? We all love it. We love the holidays. Everyone's just so happy around the holidays. That's really why I like it. Not even necessarily because of the actual holiday itself. I just like how joyous people are in the stores and all the Christmas music. It just is so festive and happy. I just love that the whole, kind of like the whole community is having a good day. That's what it feels like for a month. It's awesome. So that's why I like the holidays. Plus my kids. Now I see it through my kids' eyes and it's so stinking cute. They absolutely, they're already excited about Turkey Day and they're already excited about Christmas and Santa Claus and all the elves. And I'm trying like heck to avoid doing Elf on the Shelf. They're still a little too young to even know what that is. All right, I'm gonna wait till that handle comes along and now we're gonna work on that handle. 
gonna use my finger on this one to be able to kind of work the epoxy around on the handle. Do not touch your cup unless you're wearing nitrile gloves, guys. I'm just kind of doing this so I can feel if there's a rough spot where I didn't get enough epoxy. Okay, looks good. Rocking and rolling. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, wipe off my silicone brush. Now you don't have to wipe off your silicone utensils, guys. If, it, if the epoxy cures on your silicone tools, it will come off. Um, it just has to draw, if it, if, it, if it cures up on your tools, that's all right, it'll pop off. You just gotta bend the tool or pick the, pick the epoxy off, it'll come off. Um, epoxy does not bond to uh, silicone. All right, so, so that's why we use silicone tools, guys. Oop, there's a couple little straggler glitters there. That was me just, there was a couple little straggler glitters. They must have been on my gloves or something. Okay. So now you see how move, quickly I move with this, guys, and I'm still wearing my chemical mask. I will now wear my chemical mask since we've now, this is my first tutorial starting this morning, um, and I will wear my, wear my mask all day because this epoxy will be curing in this shop all day. So I work in my shop all day. I generally have my mask on every single minute of the day while I'm out here because I almost always have epoxy turning. There is an occasion here and there where I don't have epoxy going because I've been live in the group or just busy with my kiddos, but I pretty much wear my, my chemical mask all day. So we're just gonna let this roll. You can see that this fits on this turner very well. This is the Little Ian Rose turner, guys. We actually measured it to have the perfect amount of space to be able to spin so if you have a mug with a handle, it will fit. Um, this is, and then we have it under the work mat. This work mat is, um, will, will as well repel the epoxy. So you want to definitely put something underneath it to catch any drips or if you make a little mess, it'll clean off. So this is a work mat. We have these on our website. Um, there's also silicone pads. Um, these are great as well. This is, a, if you have a smaller craft space, this works. Or if you have a bunch of uh, turners lined up. They are these long, thin ones and you can lay them down like this underneath as well um i just happen to have this black work mat already set up and going so we went ahead and rolled with it um <clears throat> but this turner is awesome this is the little and rose turner guys uh it can run 48 72 hours it might really never turn off um and like i said we did definitely measure it to make sure it could handle these wonderful handles and as you can see this thing is spinning around just fine having no issues Torch it just a tiny bit. A little few little micro bubbles there. All right, guys, we'll be back. All right, guys, we are back with this cup. It's got the first layer of epoxy on it. It's beautiful. It looks great. Um, we're going to keep rocking and rolling, but what I want to do is sand the edges down just a bit because this is where we have our main rough spots are mainly on the edges of the cups. And this is ultimately going to be covered with spray paint anyway. So even if I sand down a little too far and I hit the glitter, I know that it's going to be okay because uh, this area, like I said, is going to be covered with spray paint. So we really don't care about the way this, this glitter looks here. We just look, we care about the smoothness of the surface because you want a nice smooth surface so that your paint lays down nice and flat. Otherwise, you're going to see every tiny little imperfection under the paint. Ultimately, we're covering it with more glitter, but I like to be very thorough. And I like to create the perfect cups. So this one little step is fast and easy, and it makes it does make an impact on your final project. So we're just smoothing out the rough bumps around the edges, right along there and right along here. This is 320 grit. Um, some people like 220. I do. I go back and forth between 220 and 320. They're both just a really fine grit sandpaper. So you can see there's no, it's not rough or anything. It's almost like it's just kind of a rough piece of paper and it's just 
gently sanding down these bumps, giving us a nice surface. We are going to do one more layer of epoxy on this before we paint. All right, so now I'm going to take this cup, I'm going to wash it with Dawn soap and water and let it completely dry. Now, I will not touch this cup again with bare hands uh, because the fingerprints of you touching this with a bare hand, the oils on your fingers, even though your fingers might feel dry, there are dirt um, contaminants and oils on your fingers. So when you touch it, um, you're leaving behind those contaminants and the epoxy will fisheye. We call them fisheye. Well, I call them holidays, but I'm in the minority. So they're fisheyes um, where the little the epoxy doesn't settle and you get these weird little ripples. So that's what we are trying to avoid by not touching it with our bare hands. All right, guys, so we're going to wash this. We'll be back. All right, guys, we are back with this cup. This one has been, we smoothed the edges with the sanding. Um, now we are going to add our uh, peekaboo decals. I printed them off in this blue because I have just a lot of this vinyl, and I don't really use it that much. So it's what I use for my um, peekaboos because I'm going to end up ultimately throwing them away. I've got... Um, some squares of this um, transfer tape printed out, I mean cut out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rub it onto my decals. I'm gonna pull it up. I kind of do the game of whatever comes up is the shape it's meant to be. You always wanna make sure that the points of the honeycomb are pointed up. You don't want them flat like this. These are, they are made in nature with the points going up and down. So that's how we wanna lay these on the cup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press them on and Peel up. All right, so I'm just going to apply these decals kind of around the cups, spot it around, and um, just like this, and we'll start on our next step. All right, so now we have the decals all on the cup. Just spot it around really well. Um, just kind of in my own personal pattern, how I like it. It's gonna be personal preference, how you wanna put these down and in where you wanna do them and what size you wanna do your um, honeycombs. It's the, the most important thing is always remember your points go up and down um, because that's the way they occur in nature. So if you're gonna be giving this cup to, to tens to bees, they're gonna notice the difference. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this outside. I'm gonna tape off this handle and we are going to coat it with um, Scotch Super 77. This is a multi-purpose adhesive. Um, this will cure, it cures up, it will harden. So what we wanna do is spray it. Then we're gonna take Peyton, and Peyton is our white white. Um, Peyton has no color shift, no iridescence to it. It is just our flat white, and that's what I wanna use because I want this to be a very simple, classy cup. Very simple with the champagne gold and the white and the black. So we are going to use Peyton. He, she, uh, he is our pure white. Peyton is part of our Glitter Gives Back pro program where if when you order Peyton from our website, um, he 100% of the proceeds goes towards supporting NICU families, um, that families that have babies in the NICU. So this is one of our Glitter Gives Backs. Um, but I just love this color because it is a very plain, simple white. Um, it doesn't have a big show to it. It's just if, if you just want a very crystal, pure white, Peyton is your man. All right, guys, so I'm going to take him outside. We're going to tape off this handle, and we're going to spray paint it with Scotch Super 77, and we'll be right back. All right, you guys can see it's got a weird texture to it. I spray painted it white to be the base, and then the texture is just the um, adhesive spray. So now we're going to take Peyton, and we are going to sprinkle them all over. So we do the white base that helps us get really, really good coverage. Because if we hadn't done the white base, um, it would be very, very, very difficult to cover um, all of the uh, beigey, the champagne colored glitter uh, with the white. It would take numerous, numerous, numerous layers. So we just base paint white over it and then we just keep on keeping on. So I use these parchment papers that have the seam in them because they're really easy for me to pick up with my one hand, pour the glitter back into the little jar that I use for my shaker. And keep going. I can do it all with one hand. Get 
get the glitter down in all the spots. Knock off all the extra glitter, pick it up one more time. So we can put it on the bottom. Put the glitter on the bottom, make sure all the edges, oops, looks like I touched it there. All right, now we will just let this cure. You can kind of sort of see the blue through the white. So we'll go with this and then I might add one more layer of the white glitter. We'll see how I feel. Um, <coughs> I'm going to leave. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm still sick, guys. Um, we are going to leave the tape on here uh, for now in case I decide to do one more layer of the spray adhesive and another layer of Peyton. Um, that way I don't have to retape it. All right, guys, we're going to let this sit for a couple hours. Let that all dry and cure up, cure up and we'll see where we're at. Okay, guys, sorry. Excuse the cricket noise in the background. We are cutting vinyl for our next tutorial. Um, but we've got the spray adhesive down on this cup. So now we're just going to start shimmying some of the beautiful Peyton down onto the cup. The white base is going to really help with coverage. I still might do two layers just to make sure we get a lot of sparkling glitter. Oop, there's a little something in the little, little glitter contaminant. That's the thing with white is it shows everything. Okay, tap off the excess. Then we just take our parchment paper that has the um, seam in it and we are able to fold it and dump it back into our cup with one hand. I don't need all of it. So These are just little parchment papers I find in the baking section of the grocery store. Get the bottom nice and covered. All right, tap it off. I'm gonna let this dry for about an hour. <clears throat> and let that um, tack really grab onto that glitter. Then we'll probably do a second coat of this beautiful glitter. All right guys, we'll be back. All right, so here we are. We're gonna be removing the honeycombs we're going to be taking our fine point, super fine point, um, tweezing, twe weeding tweezers. You can find these on littleianrose.com. Um, we also have our weeding ring on. This ring is wonderful because it's where we can put all the vinyl that we take off. It just goes right down inside of that weeding ring. So we very carefully remove the vinyl with these awesome tweezers, stick it down inside, pull it to the side, and pull the tweezers out that way. Oop, slippery. Slippery one wet, guys. It's pouring rain here today. That has nothing to do with me sliding, but I'm um, just a goober. All right, so we're going to lift this up. So you can see I scratched the surface here just a little bit. The nice thing about this, though, is you can just rub and push down, and that little cut will just go right away. All right, guys, we're going to work our way all the way around the cup. All right, so now we're at the step where, stage where we've got our honeycombs revealed. We've got the beautiful white. It's so cool. I'm loving it. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this outside and we are going to clear coat spray paint it. The clear coat spray paint is going to help keep the white glitter in place where it's at. Oops, there's a little blue something there. Um, there's, it's going to keep the white glitter where it's at so it doesn't move around when we go to put epoxy on it. Um, and get inside of our beautiful champagne gold areas. All right, guys, so I'm going to take this outside. We'll get it spray painted clear, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we have our epoxy all mixed. I have my chemical mask on. We'll tighten it just a little bit. There we go. Tightened up my epoxy mask, um, my chemical mask. Now we're going to take our epoxy, and we're going to start laying it over the top of these. Remember that this, um, I spray painted the white over the white to make sure that this white glitter stays in place. So it doesn't go into the gold parts. There 
There we go. I'm just going to make sure we apply the epoxy towards the top and work it towards the bottom. This does not need to be a heavy layer, just needs coverage. We're going to still add all of our decals and do all that fun stuff. So I'm just using my epoxy brush to push the epoxy up and down and move it around to make sure we get good coverage all the way around the cup. Sorry, my turner is being weird because I took the pin out and I forgot to put it back. I'll have to put it back when I set this to run for all the hours. I took the pin out because I use the pin to hold it in, but I take the pin out when I use it to put on the drying rack. And I just forgot to replace the pin. So it's not holding it as well, but it will, I just got to put the pin in and it'll be fine. Do, do, do. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the handle. I'm gonna do the handle with my finger. I'm gonna use a paper towel to clean off my silicone brush. Set it off to the side. And I'm going to just add another coat to the handle. This will be the second coat on the handle. I always do at least two coats of en over anything because that gives it thick enough. Otherwise it's like thin like a piece of paper and it won't really protect that paint. See, and because I didn't have the pin in, I was able to force it to come around faster. So I didn't have to wait. I just rolled it around to me. Okay. All right, that looks beautiful. I think we got some good coverage on the epoxy there. I am going to wipe off my finger. I try not to let epoxy sit on my gloves. I know that these Gloves protect me, but I always like to be a little overcautious. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our kitchen torch and we are going to turn it on and we are going to torch the cup. This is going to pop all the micro bubbles. The CO2 of the flame is what will work on all the micro bubbles. Even if you don't see the bubbles, you guys, they are there and they will add texture to your cup if you leave them. I'm gonna have to put that pin in sooner than later. I can just see them all popping as I go. It's awesome, it's kind of fun. All right, guys, so this one, now that we've got a layer of epoxy on it, we're going to let it roll for probably about nine hours, and then we'll add the decals. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. All right, guys, now we've got the layer of epoxy over this. We are going to start adding our drips. <clears throat> As you can see, I have uh, cut out the reversed opposite image from this to make a stencil so that we can spray paint our drips. So what I'm going to do is remove this off the paper, and we're going to apply it onto the cup. I'm going to be careful with the handle, and I what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually feed this through 
the handle. And as you can see, I'm going to make sure that the drip is right along the handle. Right about there. Now we don't want the drips to go too far down the cup. We want them to tr kind of be more towards the top. I'll lift this up and reposition it a little bit. There we go. Then we're just going to work our way around the cup. Now the the, the um, vinyl does not lead, need to lay down perfectly. I'm just going to rub it in. If it's got some creases and some seams, that is totally okay. This Because this vinyl is just being used as a stencil. So it does not need to lay down pretty. It just needs to be on the cup. All right, guys. So we're just going to keep it coming around. We're going to have it meet up right here. You want to just make sure all these edges right along this side are pressed down real firm. Even if there's some wrinkles, we don't care about the wrinkles. Now this one's where it's going to get a little weird. I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife in and I'm going to cut this out to make it look like one big drip. And I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife to do that. What I'm mainly worried about is making sure that the vinyl is pressed down very, very firmly all the way around. All right, guys. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this outside. I'm going to tape off the handle again because we don't want the handle black. We want to keep it the champagne gold. So we're going to tape off this handle with uh, our painter's tape right here. And we're going to take this outside and I'm going to cover up this bottom piece as well with... So basically the handle the, and the bottom piece will be completely covered with painter's tape. And we're going to paint with black spray paint. We're going to paint the drips. Um, again, this is not meant to look realistic. This is meant to look fun and different. So the black is just a very classy, different, um, different style for this cut tumbler. All right, guys, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to take the tape off and do the big reveal. There's a lot of tape. So this is going to take a minute to unwind all this. It's going to be super fun. As you guys can hear, my voice is finally back. Not completely. I'm still a little squawky and squeaky. I'm not going to be singing an opera anytime soon, but at least I sound a little bit more normal. All right, guys, so what I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to peel away all this painter's tape, start going back down to the base of our cup. We just had to cover it up because we were going to paint it, and I found it to be just be easier to just throw some tape all over everything than to try to cover it with a towel or just not spray paint it because you always get overspray. So I just took the big, thick painter's tape and slapped it around the cup real quick. Starting to bring that white back out. Here we go. Super fun. I'm going to put it, um, well, I was going to say I was going to put it on high speed, but I don't want you guys to miss the best part. Let's see, where's our seam here? So we're just taking our fine tweezers, getting in there, lifting up that corner. Now we're just going to peel this away. And it's just going to give us our honey drips, our black honey drips. Sorry, guys. I forgot to um, stick my vinyl down to my shirt. So there's a little tip for you guys. Make it easier for yourself. Um, if you're using 651 vinyl, which I did because I have 631, but it's my favorite color and I don't want to waste it. <laughs> so I'm using 651 vinyl. And normally I would take this and touch it to my shirt a few times and de-stickify it. So it's a little bit easier to pull it up. Uh, but I forgot to do that on this one. That's why it's being a little bit of a trick, tricky little stinker for me um, because uh, it's very, very stuck to the cup because it's permanent vinyl. But if you take it and you press it to your shirt and lift it up and down a few times, um, it takes it and makes it a little less sticky because it kind of builds up a little bit of 
I guess the dust and such on the back of the, the um, adhesive so it doesn't stick down as firmly. So it's more like 631. But like I said, I have 631. I just really like the color and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to use it and then just ruin it by pulling it off the cup. All right, guys, I'm going to put the second half on uh, high speed. Okay, guys, um, you saw me just pull off the vinyl and it came off relatively easy once I got going. Um, now we're going to take it in and we're actually going to clean up around these lines because it looks like some of the vinyl, some of the paint just leaked just under the vinyl and came out. So what I do to get those and to be very, very careful so we don't um, hit everything else around it and take off the black paint that we don't want to remove, I just take my little super needle nose tweezers and I pull a cotton ball or a Q-tip apart and I twist, I pinch down and I twist the cotton to the tip of the super fine point of my tweezers. And I basically make a really fine point Q-tip. So you guys see that? It's just got a very, very, very small amount of uh, the cotton on the end. You don't want to use a lot of cotton, guys, because it does have fibers and you don't want to go um, get stuck to your cup. I know everybody comments about my fur here, but the fur makes it very easy for you guys to see what I'm working on. Um, so uh, that's why I use it. But uh, for on my cup, we're just going to use the rubbing alcohol. And you can see it just, you just point it on there and rub very just be very consistent and just keep going and it will slowly wipe and rub all that paint away in that little excess spot. And then we take a Q-tip. Clean it. And we're just going to keep going around the cup and anywhere that the paint uh, seeped underneath the decal, we'll just rub with the rubbing alcohol and remove it. We're going to go all the way around the cup and do this. This is why you want to make sure you press down real firm when you're doing your um, uh, vinyl. So I must have been a little distracted and not pressed it down well. Okay, guys, I am loving this cup. Oh, it's not even, we don't even have the decals on. But what you just saw was me put a layer of epoxy over the top of this. Now I want to just get a really, really smooth surface be before we started adding these decals because the decals show every tiny little detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our decals. Then I'm going to very, very gently sand this upper rim. Then we're going to go ahead and rinse the cup and put more epoxy on it. So we are going to start with our queen bee. Um, I have cut this out Oop, on my, my Cricut, my vinyl cutter. I prefer Cricut um, over Silhouette. And so let's see, we're going to line this up perfectly straight, and we're going to drop it down. So what I'm doing here is I'm eyeballing. I'm making the bottom of the line flat and flush with the bottom of the word B because I know that that is a straight line. So I'm just kind of lining it up how I want it and giving it a good, a good eyeball. And we're going to set it here. And I'm going to press in the middle. And I go one side at a time. I lay down my vinyl one side at a time. And go nice and slow so we don't have any wrinkles. You might hear my kiddos in the background. All right. And remove our vinyl. Oh, we do have a crease. All right, so now I had to recut the cue real quick. So I recut the cue and replaced it back on the cup because the cue wrinkled just a little bit. I got a little cocky and got my britches, got a little big for my britches. And I was like, oh, I could just slap this all down at once. 
But the curve of the cup and the hump of the cup this way made it a little difficult and gave us a little bit of a uh, mistake on our cue. But that's because I just tried to lay the entire decal down by myself. And I knew when I did it, I should have been cutting it in half and cutting the cue off and laid this piece and then laid the cue. But I thought I could get it done and I did. Okay, so we've relayed the cue down and now we're going to stick our bees down. These guys are super cute. I even mentioned to my Becca, my Becca, that how cute these bees were. So we're just going to place them around the cup. I always look, if there's like a little mistake or something on the cup, you can always cover it with your bee. Um, and remember I was, uh, when I was doing these, you guys, I scratched the, um, the glitter a little bit. So anywhere where there's like a little scratch, I'm going to go ahead and put a bee and just hide it. So boop. And there we go. We fixed that one little mistake. I use the same transfer paper, guys. I just use it over and over until it loses its tackiness. And we're just going to stick this guy right here. So I use my transfer paper over and over and over until it runs out of tacky. Um, mainly because I don't like to waste. So we like to be budget friendly, keep our costs low so that our margin is better. Um, I, again, I'm just dotting these bees around anywhere on the cup for fun. We don't want to forget the bottom, so let's grab one and do the bottom really quick. Stick one of ours. Always something fun on the butt. All right, so we're just going to kind of spin it around and stick the rest of these bees on. just like that she is done now if you guys have any issues where there's a fish eye or a little bump or a little scrape um, something going on you can always do a gentle light sand you can wet sand which means you use a very high grit like 220 or 320 and you run it underwater while you sand the reason you do that would be the dust it takes the dust away from your cup and leaves your cup nice and clean to then add your next layer of epoxy it keeps the um the particles uh, from also going up in the air and you breathing them in. So if you need to sand down just a little bit, um, do that before you add your final layer. Also, you can use acetone to clean the inside of the cup. You want to be careful not to get it on the outside of the cup. You can also use a hot knife or a heated up X-Acto knife to clean along this top rim. All right, guys, I hope you learned something new. I hope you got some great tips. If you have further questions um, or look to get more inspired, um, go ahead and join our Facebook group. All the links for everything you saw used in this tutorial and also the link for our Facebook group, our Instagram, and our TikTok can be found below the video. Click on the description. It says read more. Click on read more. It'll open up all the links for everything you need there. All right, guys, I hope you learned something new on this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.